Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Finland, welcome to slush, and actually welcome to slushy Finland. Uh, question, how many of you were here in 2008? Yeah, I feel a little bit like a geriatric old timer. But you know, in 2008, I think the times were actually quite optimistic. We were still living sort of this end of history, all 200 nation states in the world will become liberal democracies, technology will liberate us from all evil. There was this real feeling of something new. And I remember when people told me that we're going to organize this big startup event called Slush in November, I was going, why? But here we are in 2016, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel a little bit edgy. A lot of conflict, a lot of disorder, elections left and right. Technology is not necessarily providing what we wanted us to provide. But my message to you here today is very clear. There's no such thing as deterministic history or deterministic technology. It's actually up to you to solve the problems. We all know that technology will change work and our economy. It'll change politics and the way in which we communicate. And actually, it'll change science and the way in which we are as human beings. These are huge existential questions. In 2008, as a matter of fact, I remember people thinking that, you know, you need to start finding new jobs, do coding. Well, I think artificial intelligence does that for us today. 2008, people thought, yeah, communication is going to be liberated. And as a matter of fact, Twitter was able to have a civilized conversation. <laughs> but it wasn't like that anymore. And of course, in 2008, we didn't know anything about CRISPR technology and DNA sequencing and changing the human genome. So things advance really fast. And I think it's important for us here today to give an iota of optimism and hope of what tech can do. Because there is a choice. Sometimes the choice is binary. It can be a question of do you create a digital democracy or do you create digital dictatorship? It can be about, do you split the current internet into different types of nets, or do you continue to work for uh, a global internet? Or it can be about, do you incite hate, or do you incite hope in what you do? And I think a lot of this stuff is actually in your hands, because you are the techies. You are the ones who create the future. And I would like for you to take with you three things. The first one is personal. Think hard what technology does for you and to you. I don't know about you guys, but when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I check out my phone. And that's when data collection starts. About my sleeping patterns, about my exercise patterns, about what kind of media I follow. Uh, of what kind of food I buy, about where I move. Suddenly there is this data fruit print about me, which someone will use at some stage in one way or another. So think about what technology does to you. And I would actually argue that you and I, in many ways, are information managers. In other words, we stand or sit or lie in front of screens, and we put numbers and letters into an order, and then we try to communicate something about them. But I think life is more than being a data manager. And on top of that, artificial intelligence will do a lot of that. So what I ask you to do personally is think about 
how do you and how can you take the edge with technology and show some empathy? Because technology doesn't necessarily do that for you. Yes, you can have an empathetic conversation with ChatGPT, but the bottom line is what we as human beings are left with is empathy. Second thing I want you to take away, what does your tech company do for good? What is the product? What is it that you try to do with your investment on the technology that you have in hand? Is it going to help us as human beings? Is it in the business of health? Is it in the business of fashion? What is the business that you do and how will that tech improve the world? And my final and third point is global. I think we are coming to, and sorry for using the Harari term, a nexus or infliction point in humanity and mankind, where for the first time in the history of human beings, there can be something that supersedes us, or at least takes our autonomy away in the form of artificial intelligence. I think personally that we need global rules across all 200 nations in the world that make sure that we humans, empathetic human beings, are always in the driver's seat. I will finish by leaving you with a thought. I remember in 2008, and a little bit later when I was foreign minister, we did a branding report of Finland. And we were really working hard on what is the slogan that we want to take away. You know, how are we going to get all of these slush techies to invest in Finland? And how do we get them to come here and notice that this is probably the best place in the world to invest? And you know, we came up with a simple term. Finland, even cooler than you think. Thank you very much. <laughs>